Hey friends, my name is Sahil and this is my Personal Finance Academy. One sector that was badly impacted due to COVID was banking sector. Every bank saw the rise in their NPA that impacted their profitability. Due to that, banking sector stocks tanked after COVID along with other sectors. However, other sectors have seen sharp recovery but the banking sector has still not seen that kind of recovery. Majority of stocks are still available at reasonable valuation. Now that we have the Q2 results of majority of banks, there are clear signs of improvement in banking sector. Now that the economy is opening up, there is more demand for loans and there is also a reduction in NPAs. So in this video, I want to discuss two mid-cap sector banks that have posted good quarterly results and look promising for investment. But before we proceed, remember that this video is not a stock tip. I don't provide stock tips. If you are only looking for stock tips, then you can skip this video. I am sure there are a lot of other YouTube channels and sources to get the stock tips. I am here to empower you with the right knowledge across various aspects of investment so that you can make an informed investment decision. I do not want you to invest blindly based on tips. Moreover, let me clarify that I never intend to misguide anyone. Some of the stocks that I cover in my video might not do well. But at the end of the day, I am also a human being and I can also make mistakes. Also, please do not judge the stock performance based on 2-3 months of movement. A lot of people comment saying that X stock has not moved from the last 2-3 months. If you are a long term investor, then try to look at the bigger picture. I always say that in the short term, market is driven by sentiments and in the long term, market is driven by fundamentals. So if a stock doesn't perform well for let's say 3 to 6 months, then it doesn't mean that the stock is bad. You would need patience to create wealth in the stock market. And make sure that you invest in fundamentally strong companies. Alright, now let's get started with this video. So the first stock is Federal Bank. Federal Bank was established in 1931 as Travancore Federal Bank Limited, but later the name was changed to Federal Bank. So it is more than 80 years old bank. Since it started from Kerala, the biggest presence of Federal Bank is in the South India. But now it has expanded to every major city in India. Today, Federal Bank has a strong network with presence in 24 states and 1,272 branches. Federal Bank has recently declared its Q2 results and the results are impressive. If you look at the loan book of the bank, its Q2 loan book stood at 1.37 lakh crore and this loan book has grown around 10% year on year. Out of this, 54% loan book is retail loan that include your personal loan, home loan, car loan, gold loan, agriculture loan and so on. And remaining 46% is wholesale loan that is your corporate loan. If you look at the net interest margin, the latest net interest margin for Q2 stood at 3.2%. Net interest income stood at 1,479 crore that has improved 4% as compared to last quarter. Its profits have grown from 367 crore in last quarter to 460 crore in Q2. If you look at the CASA ratio, it grew 18% year on year and stood at all time high of 36.16%. If you look at the return on equity, the ROE has also improved in Q2 and stood at 10.73%. If you look at the asset quality, it has also improved and the net NPA has reduced from 1.23% to 1.12%. If you look at the valuation, Federal Bank is currently trading at Rs 95. It has a market cap of around Rs 20,000 crore. It has a price to book value of 1.24 which is much lower than all other established private banks. Its PE ratio is around 11 that again looks very attractive. Hence, from valuation point of view, Federal Bank is looking very attractive. If you look at the future of banking, the future is digital. Federal Bank is also focusing a lot on digital banking and has recently launched an AI powered virtual personal assistant with name Fedi. So you can ask all banking queries in normal language and you will get your answer. Federal Bank is enhancing its investment in API banking and working with fintech partners to enhance the digital experience. Just to give you an idea, 86% of transactions with bank in FI 2021 were digital and 84% account opening were opened digitally. Bank has seen 167% growth in its UPI transaction. So overall, the future is looking bright. Now as far as management is concerned, Federal Bank MD and CEO is Mr. Sham Srinivasan. 
He has been the CEO and MD of Federal Bank since 2010. He is an IM Kolkata alumni and started his career with Wipro and later joined Citibank. He has got over 30 years of experience in banking industry. In fact, Sham Srinivasan is the man behind transforming Federal Bank from being a Kerala based old small size bank to now a new age mid sized bank. Overall, the leadership of Federal Bank is very strong and that is the key anchor for growth in the future. Now, second stock is IDFC First Bank. I've already created an in-depth video on IDFC First Bank and mentioned that I'm optimistic about the future growth of IDFC First Bank. Reason being that IDFC First is led by Mr. V. Vedyanathan, who has a very successful track record in the banking industry. He started his career with Citibank in the 1990s and later joined ICIC Bank and set up the ICICI Retail Banking Division between 2000 to 2009. So he was the key person behind setting up the retail banking for ICIC Bank, which is now India's second largest private bank. Later, he started Capital First that grew exceptionally under his leadership. So he's got a rich experience of almost three decades in Indian banking sector, along with an exceptional track record. Those of you who are not aware, in 2018, Capital First was merged with IDFC Bank to create a new entity, IDFC First. Before the merger, IDFC Bank was involved in infrastructure financing and Capital First was involved in consumer and MSME financing. Now after the merger, IDFC First loan book had high exposure in wholesale banking with infrastructure loans that got inherited from IDFC. And there were a lot of loan payments default in wholesale banking that impacted the profitability of this newly listed IDFC First Bank. Due to that, if you look at the financials of IDFC first, it would show losses. However, under the leadership of V. Vedyanathan, IDFC first is transforming from being a wholesale bank to a retail bank. In fact, at the time of merger in 2018, IDFC first bank had retail loan book of only 35%, but today this retail loan book is 67%. In fact, the bank has been growing quickly after the merger. In 2018, it had 206 branches and today it has 600 branches. Bank's total funded asset in September 21 quarter stood at 1.17 lakh crore which is up 10% year on year. Total profit for IDFC first in September 21 quarter stood at 152 crore against the loss of 630 crore in last quarter. Now this loss in last quarter was mainly due to high provisioning and this quarter the provisioning has reduced and that resulted in good profits. Another reason is that the bank is aggressively expanding its retail branch network with new hirings and investment in digital capabilities that is eating a lot of profits. As the bank scales up its retail liability business and utilizes on the cross-sell potential going forward, the retail liabilities would reduce these losses in the business. Now, retail loan book of the bank has increased 30% year on year from Rs 59,860 crore as on September 20 to Rs 78,048 crore as on September 2021. There is a strong growth in home loan business that has grown 46% year on year. Wholesale funded book decreased 16% year on year from 36,987 crore as on September 2020 to 31,198 crore as on September 2021. So clearly the retail business is growing quickly, which is a great sign. Its CASA deposit has increased 53% year on year from 30,181 crore as on September 20 to 46,269 crore as on September 2021. Bank's CASA ratio has improved from 40.37% as on September 2020 to 51.28% as on September 2021. Now more than 50% CASA is brilliant. If you look at the profitability, Bank's net interest margin has improved from 4.91% in Q2 of FY21 and 5.51% in Q1 of FY22 to 5.76% for Q2 of FY22. Now, this is a very high profitability. This was mainly due to the improvement in cost of deposit as bank has reduced its interest rate on saving account. Although now that home loan segment is growing fast which has lower margin, their net interest margin would stabilize from here. If you look at the asset quality, its gross NPA in September 21 stood at 4.27% and net NPA is 2.09%. Both gross NPA and net NPA have reduced as compared to last quarter. This NPA is slightly on the higher side due to COVID, but bank is confident of asset quality improvement to pre-COVID levels. 
then bank has capital adequacy ratio of 15.6% which is comfortable. By the way, IDFC First is India's first commercial bank to provide monthly interest on saving account. If you look at the valuation, IDFC First Bank is currently trading at rupees 49. It has a market cap of around 30,000 crore rupees. IDFC First Bank has a price to book value of 1.75 which is again looking reasonable. Again, as far as future is concerned, banking sector in India is expected to grow at a very good rate. Bank also has a lot of focus on digital banking. IDFC First Bank management is expecting a year-on-year -year growth of 25% in its retail loan book. Now, if that happens, IDFC First would create a lot of value for its shareholder. It has recently launched its credit card and has already issued 4 lakh credit cards. Then bank has also forayed into your wealth management services, mutual fund, insurance and so on. I think that overall, the future growth prospects are very bright. The only risk aspect with both Federal Bank and IDFC First Bank is their asset quality. Due to COVID, there was a significant damp in their asset quality and there is still a risk of default and bad loans in the future. Although both banks are confident that as the economy is improving, the bad loan will reduce and the profitability would increase. So in this video, we discuss the two banking stocks that are looking attractive for investment purpose. Federal Bank on one side has transformed from an old bank to a new age digital bank and IDFC first has transformed from a wholesale bank to a retail focused bank. Both are new age banks with focus on digitization. Both have a very strong management team which is the key for any bank. After Covid, as the economy is recovering, banking sector is expected to do well in the near future. Now if you look at the long term growth prospect, Indian economy is bound to grow in the next 20-30 years and banks are the backbone of the economy. There is immense growth potential in the banking and financial sector in India. So tell me in the comments if you have invested in any of the banks and which is your preferred bank between the two. In case you want to learn more about banking ratio and how to do fundamental analysis of a stock, you can explore my complete course on money management. I hope you would find my analysis useful. I'll see you in the next video. Till then, take care.